What's up? This is Guardy with Clear Life Media, Clear Life Combat. We're here in League City, the Clear Life HQ. I have a guest hanging out today in studio. I'm going to let him introduce himself. We're going to find out everything he has going on. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going on, dude? I appreciate it. It's Alex Zeraldo here. All right, Alex, if somebody hasn't met you before, let them know there's an event that's coming up and, and what do you have going on? When is it? Uh, well, you can find me on Instagram at the Matt Devil, of course. Uh, we got a show going on on uh, Sunday, September 29th. Forged in Fire. It's the first ever Houston. Uh, it's a quintet. Quintet. Team elimination. We're going to ha have that in uh, Katy uh, at most place off of Kingsland Boulevard. Really, really, really nice venue. It's been around for a little over 30 years. Uh, run by a, ga a guy named uh, Mo Senior. We all know him. And his son, Mo Jr., actually trains at the gym that I go to, Revolution Dojo. So it's something I've been actually been working on since... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me since like 2019 uh, always dreamt of wanting to do uh, something in the jujitsu realm like to put my thumbprint in, in some some type of way I mean you train so you know what I'm talking about like when you're watching these guys do jujitsu it's like how can I get involved or do more so for me it's always been about community so I was always like oh man I want to do a tournament one day so in 2019 I had came up with a, a more bigger idea of of doing a quintet because I saw Sakuraba have his quintet and I just really really liked the the format so we finally got the show up and going again I've tried to do it two other times with some uh, hiccups that I can talk about in some, probably some other time but uh, uh, I'm really happy to have it going this time around uh, so it's, it's going to be pretty pretty dope we got uh, some pretty intense teams Gracie Baja Team Revolution Dojo uh, even a, a fellow fight promoter, jiu-jitsu promoter, uh, Tom, at uh, Combat Sports Coverage, he's, he's got his own dream team that he developed. And then uh, a group of guys that, man, they came out of nowhere uh, from Henzo Gracie, Austin. Um, this guy named Niaz. I remember, <laughs> I remember he asked me, he was like, this is my name. It's just like Diaz, but with knees. It's Niaz. And they came out with a really, really cool team, so... I'm like super excited because I've been wanting to do a team uh, elimination jujitsu tournament for a long time. So, yeah. Is there a favorite? Uh, <laughs> I actually got asked that. Uh, I, I personally do kind of have a preference, but I want to like keep it in my heart. Uh, well, you train at Revolution Dojo, I, I right? I do. I do. I do. I uh, do. But still, you never know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I honestly think. Revo has a huge chance. Um, there's some guys that are some pretty heavy hitters on there, and they're also uh, very strong. Uh, however, the guys at Henzo Gracie Austin, you know, uh, they're, they're leg lockers. Uh, they probably get the game maybe a little bit more, like the format maybe. Uh, not to say that, you know, most of the guys that are on this, uh, half of them are gi players. You know, they truly are gi players. You know, you got Gracie Ba, and you've got... Uh, Revolution Dojo uh, and then you've got combat sports coverage which most of those guys they are nogi players and then uh, that team out coming out of Henzo's they're all nogi as well not to say that the guys at Gracie Baja and, and Revolution Dojo don't do nogi they all do um, but they also don't have heavy dudes I mean you've got like uh, in Revolution Dojo the heaviest guy I think that's on this card is um, a good friend of mine named Chris Roberson. Uh, he also won uh, Master Worlds this year uh, in the gi. Uh, but the dude is a beast. He's always game. And, I mean, the guy's been there for me since 2019, like from jump. And then uh, you got another big guy, uh, Nunso Embere. Uh, he has his own gym called Haven Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, he's a ground dweller, Eddie Avalar, black belt. He's a big dude, too. He's a big dude. And they're both gentle giants. You mm -hmm. know, really, really good dudes. Um, the other the other two teams, they don't really have really, really big guys, but they've got really, like, squirrely dudes and, and strong, strong, strong people. Um, and Gracie Ba, you got Hunter Newton. I've known him since uh, I started jiu-jitsu in the very beginning. We used to be with uh, Gracie Baja in Katy years ago, a long, long time ago. And he's a really, really strong dude and a great wrestler. But then uh, Chad Holland, who's the team captain of Gracie Baja, he's no slouch. Uh, he's a good old boy from Ole Miss, and he's a judo black belt, and he's just really, really strong. I, I, I'm not trying to play favorites or say one thing over the other. It's, it's, I'm just really impressed with the mix that they all have. And um, 
I, I, it's really hard for me to say. I do have a preference. I do want someone to win, <laughs> you know, but, but also, too, I don't want to show any favoritism. And I even got rid of that idea because um, I had a lot of people ask me, how was I going to match? Who was going to be matched with who? You know, yeah, I want to see one team fight another or I want to see one. But I, I, I don't want to show any influence and I don't want to show any favoritism. So I literally had a, an, a, a, an idea like I was going to have the guys. You ever watched the movie Red Belt? I haven't. You never seen it? No. Oh, dude. It's a cool movie, but it's, it's very it's very weird. Um, they had this marble idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you you'd take a marble out of the bag and you'd have to get handicapped. And it, it involved jujitsu, but it really wasn't like real world. It was, it was very still a martial arts film, but it wasn't like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It wasn't like far-fetched. So I took the marble idea and I was like, okay, I'm going to do two red and two black marbles in a bag. And the team captains have to be present, right? Every team captain picks out a marble and whoever has the same colored marble that's who they're going to be matched up with. Mm -hmm. So that way it eliminates any favoritism on my part. And I had mentioned that to some of the, uh, the guys who were competing and they were like, holy crap, <laughs> that's cool. So everything is literally to fate. Uh, no one knows who's going to fight who, not even me. And we don't even know the order until an hour they fight. And then, and then they're going to come out and that's the order they're coming out at. So yeah. yeah. Is there a team weight limit? Or how does that work? For men, uh, I also looked. I was real, <clears throat> I was really, really involved in watching like the quintet. I just really appreciated what Sakuraba did. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And in 2019, no one was doing it. No one, no one, they, no one had the whole, no one had the idea to do like, oh, we're going to do a, a team tournament. Let's do something team wise. And I was just like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I realized how the bracket should be and how it should look. I literally sat there and watched quintet over and over and it was all in japanese <laughs> it was all in japanese so you couldn't really understand it but then they did have like english you know for everyone else but even the rule set they didn't have rule sets really like to see there was nothing to see so i had to like learn everything and i figured out like okay this is how they probably got the weights you know they, they threw in a, a featherweight and maybe they threw in a middleweight and they threw in a heavyweight and they just did the average like add it all together and so for like men, it's 948 pounds. For women, it's 748 pounds. So I was just looking at every, you know, basically nitpicking it and then critiquing it, like what was cool and what was not, you know. But the quintet, it's just a really, I've just always liked the format. Anything that's team-based. And I noticed even uh, in recent years, Ryan McGuire of Third Coast Grappling, he tried to do a, a, a team format. Um, even uh, Tom. He did, he's done a team one. I, I believe he did a five on five. I don't really know if the format was exactly the same as a quintet, you know, from what I heard they weren't. And then I knew that, you know, third coast grappling, theirs weren't. Uh, so a lot of people are doing things differently. Montreal is doing a quintet, which I think is cool. And, uh, there's some other spots that are doing like team stuff, but I don't think it's like a hundred percent and no one's done it in Texas. So I'm pretty excited about that. See what, see what can happen. You know, I, I like, I guess Tom has that that group as well, but not specifically a gym, which there may be some teammates on there as well, but him to be able to pick people, that's always fun too. You talking about uh, for the... Galdenzi. Uh, for, yeah, 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 for the... He, he's... I remember when he first came out, uh, I mean, it was like... Some people complained about it, but it was it was right before COVID, and they complained about it because it was small. But no, he was just, he was just getting involved. I mean, I, if I understand too, I talked to Tom a little bit and, uh, I know he likes kickboxing. He's a striker at heart, you know, um, he's, I hope he gets more involved in jujitsu and trains. Um, uh, and I remember I would go to his shows just to support cause I'm all about that. You know, I'm all about uh, hell on my website for my show. It's community. You know, I've always been about the community, meeting everyone, getting to meet people at different gyms and training with different people because my, my style is very amalgamish you know it's it's a serious mix you know I take a little bit here a little bit there but my base I was with Gracie Baja for years and their basic curriculum I feel is like amazing because it, it, it lays a really good solid foundation you can say I can say a lot of things about Gracie Baja but I will say that that core curriculum like in the very beginning when you get there at first it feels a little mundane you're just like oh 
<laughs> I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. And you don't get it. You know, you're new. You, you should. You know, if you, now, that, now that I know it now, right? Of training almost like 20 years, you, you know now. It's like, oh, yeah, no, you definitely, you're going to do it till you hate it over and over and over again. And when I was there in the beginning, you know, having that, um, I think that, yeah, that was like a good solid, solid thing to have, you know. I'm kind of like going on a rant right now. <laughs> no, I, but, I but like Tom, it. Yeah, no, he had his, uh, when he brought his team in, like you were talking about, like he's got, he knows everybody. He, he, he just started that whole thing out, out of nowhere. And then when COVID happened, he kept going. And it was like purely out of necessity. It was like, holy shit. And he just kept doing it again and again and again and again. And I remember I did my show in uh, 2021 and he asked to be part of it and he wanted to come by and, and film and, and whatnot. And I was like, dude, I love what you're doing because you're putting on shows. I want you to build a team. And he built the first like mixed collaborative team, you know, that, that we ever had. But there was a hiccup there, so we didn't do a quintet that time. And then, you know, I had always kept in touch with him. He was still doing his tournament. That guy is on his grind. Like, oh, yeah, he's out every weekend somewhere, he's, sometimes, you know, multiple places. I like, man. you know, and then he'll go do his own events like Miami, Austin, mm -hmm. Las Vegas, Houston, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's very it is inspiring and it's very cool to see because he did start like right during COVID and kept it going, yeah. gave an opportunity for yeah. these people to compete. He, he gave an opportunity to a lot of people. If you look at his card now, it, it's, it's interesting, right? He doesn't have the most <clears throat> his show isn't very like out there. You know, he doesn't have huge LED screens. He doesn't have like fire and smoke. Well, actually, he does have smoke. He has a little vape machine. <laughs> yeah, but he's always he he's just he's putting it out there and he's given a platform for the guys to do their thing. And that's exactly what I want to do. That's exactly what I think a lot of guys. I mean, you got um, Brandon out of Tenth uh, Planet Decatur, and he's doing the PGF, and it's a totally brand new format. It's like, oh my god, you got all these guys that they want to do something, you know? And it's it's cool to see people just throw something on the wall, see what sticks. Mm -hmm. And I think Tom, man, he, man, he's throwing everything at the wall. Like if you look at his Instagram, he's always posting. <laughs> he, I, I post too, but this guy is like on fire. He's like every day, every minute. I woke up this morning. First thing I see is his post, <laughs> you know, but he, he gave a huge platform and a lot of the people that are on his cards are high level people and, and really, really cool people. So yeah, I, I really enjoy that. And then also who's next. That's, that's who's next. Like you go mm. see, even on the team things, it's like, oh, B team, whenever B team kind of first came around, it's like, who are these guys? Joseph Chen, you know, is on there. And then Joseph Chen is one of the, I think, a great teacher and very technical whenever it comes to that. And then like even like Andrew Tackett, mm. you know, hey, they won the the team thing for combat sports covers. And, and look at Andrew Tackett now, like one of the, the greatest matches, arguably, um, Ever when it comes to jujitsu on a giant stage, that no gi. CJI was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. And, and see, I, and I like that. And if people are willing to at least like go to it. I, when I went to his last show, that was at a uh, Eddie Avalar's gym at Ground Dwellers. I mean, yeah, people f driving in there and flying in there from Las Vegas, you know, for him. Uh, hell, Tackett, he was the original team captain for the second uh, show I had, and he was the team captain for Combat Sports coverage. But that whole thing had to like, I'm, I'm sorry, he had his team, cap, he was team captain for a fight factory. And then combat sports coverage had their own team as well. And there were some really heavy hitters on there. But it, to have Tackett there and want to be part of it, but it all went away, it, it kind of sucked. But uh, like you said, what's next? I mean, we have our show. He's got his show. Literally, I'm promoting two shows at once. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm rambling. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is so much fun. Uh I'm, I'm chit chatty. That's how I am. Um, yeah, I will be promoting two shows at once, I guess. He's has, he has his show this Saturday in College Station. You know, we originally had, he had his show August 3rd, and I was going to have mine August 4th, and he asked me to move, and I did. And he got this huge, cool deal for College Station. So, he, again, he has his show before Which venue is he at? He, I don't know exactly. Or is that a gym? I don't know exactly. No, no. It's in a, his, his spot it's is at a bar. His okay. spot is at a bar. Uh um, from what I understand, he said that it was a pretty large size space and, and whatnot, but he couldn't pass it up. So he's like, man, they gave me a really good deal. I was like, yeah, hey, man, hit it up. But I was, you know, you got a team Sunday, right? Like you got to get some sleep, bro, something. Um, so he's going to do that on Saturday and he's going to be up there on, uh, uh, to support his team on Sunday. And hopefully this is the thing we want to do a big collab thing together. And I've been wanting to do something huge for a long time. Like, 
you know, we can do a trident format and the quintet and have single matches. You don't want to have too many, but you don't have too little. And his connections that he's made over, over this, what, like five years now? It's, it's, it's insane. It's wild. I mean, he has really nice shows. Uh, he wants to do more. I, I like how I like what he's actually trying to do. You know, he's just giving the guys a, a stage, you know, a platform. We all want one. I mean, hell, <laughs> you know, yeah, we all want one. Uh, but are you doing it? Are you doing it based out of love? Are you doing it in a positive fashion? Or do you want to use your platform to spread crap? You know, so, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So it's going down uh, most place. So is is most place? Is that a venue? Do they do other things? Do they serve food? Is there stuff? Mo- most as place. Well? The reason why I picked that spot, it's a, it's actually a beautiful spot. Uh, a friend of mine named Mo Junior. I, I don't want to butcher your last name, buddy, so I won't say it. Um, it's a really really long, weird, strange last name. <laughs> but uh, Mo Senior, his father, has had that spot for a little over thirty years in uh, in Katy. Uh, it's a country music bar, but they do like 80s, they do rock and whatnot. So it's a, it's a massive venue for bands, live bands. And they've got a huge dance floor. Actually, that, that's what we're going to use for the matted area because it looks like a, the Kumite. It has a, 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 a huge border around it, all the way around it. And it's basically a tabletop. So there's going to be mat side seats and we got mat side tables and whatnot and they got food food like real food <laughs> most tournaments you go to they don't they've got what bananas some doritos you know you ever had a, a manwich <laughs> mm. that's nice that they they have food because you do go and watch these these uh you know these shows or or whatever but to be able to have that offered as well it's like me as a person like if i'm there working or even just watching i'm like man you know you get hungry and sometimes they can last long a long time they last forever okay i didn't go to elevate that Mm -hmm. was yesterday here we are talking about other promotions right (laughs) uh i didn't get to go to elevate last night i'm all about going to different ones i've been to elevate before um but i was told that last night ended about like 10 11 o'clock uh it started earlier in the day and it had my buddy he's a ref for it and he said he got no break (laughs) <laughs> Who was no, it? Ah, you know what I'm talking about? No, it goes. Should I? Should they I? do rotate yeah. about. They do rotate. They, they rotate refs, them out, but, but they you didn't don't have know. a break. Yeah. They didn't have a break. I understand. And yeah. I was like, dude, they got. Okay, that's a production. <laughs> that's a production thing, right? And I love you, buddy. I'm not gonna say your name though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they have to have like, you, you, you've got. Okay, I've got. I know how my runtime runtime is gonna be because I talked to my production team, and. They're really good dudes. They've got a great, great thing going. He gave me, hey, man, give me the names and we'll, we'll do an estimate of what the time, what time. And I, I'm looking at this and all I'm having to do is edit, right? And already he's got the 10 minute break. There's a break. <laughs> a in 10 it. minute break. A t- there are four 10 minute breaks. Yeah. That's 40 minutes. Yeah. But also, too, I have like less than 30 matches. And that's what you really want to have because you don't want to, <clears throat> you don't want to bore people. You don't want to make people get itchy and they want to leave. And also, how do you keep people there? Food. If you feed me, bro, <laughs> I'm sticking around. I mean, you know, if you feed me, I'm going to I'm gonna eat, which is another thing, you know. Most, most competitors, you know, they're going to do their thing. They're going to get, you know, their commission on ticket sales. Um, if they get commission on ticket sales, that, that's like awesome. But some people can't sell tickets. When I used to do super fights, it was kind of easy for me. I could sell like 20, 30 tickets easy. But I know some people can't even sell like two, you know, and that's okay. So if you can't sell tickets, you're not going to get paid. And that sucks. But that's that's the, the nature of the beast. That's exactly what every single, you know, submission uh, tournament, that's what they all do. But if you tell a dude, hey, I'll do you one. If you win, you get a full course steak dinner. They looked at me like I was crazy. So it's like, yeah, you're getting fed. And if you're a vegan, well, I, I get you a salad. You know, they, they actually have really good food at most places, you know, quesadillas, tacos. Uh, I just really like how the venue is. And it, you got to have food. And now it's also for the, uh, the spectators. They're going to want to stick around. They're going to want to eat. And, you know, man, I, I kind of leave. Whenever I go to, like, you know, other submission tournaments, you know, any, I, I kind of leave. I stay in. Watch your, su- watch. yeah, the people you're supporting and stuff. Yeah, you, you, bro. And then what are you doing? You're going to Waffle House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going to Waffle House. Yeah. You know? So you said there's about 30 matches? Yeah. yeah. And so there's the, the quintet 
and but then there's like just uh, super fights and stuff. What I decided to do is I, I wanted to give it like a build up, you know. So of course you have your preliminaries. Everyone knows it's like teens and kids. So I'm gonna have like two kids uh, that are actually really, really, really good in Houston that are gonna go head to head, and then it's like four blue belt matches. Um, and I, I purposely made it small because you, that way we can get in and get out. Doors are going to open at 12. First match is going to be about one thirty. The quintet will start at three o'clock sharp, three o'clock, three o'clock to three thirty. I won't even say sharp. We're going to give it cushion. Um, so you, if you miss three o'clock, you've missed the whole point of the show. And a lot, a lot of these shows, the, the main, you know, things, the main card is usually at the very end. This is at three, right, right, right then and there. And then you get a nice little break. And then we're going to have four purple belt matches. And then it's going to be the next quintet teams. And then uh, mm, two okay. brown and two black. Or actually, I'm going to have like one brown and one black. And then the championship quintet round yeah, at the very end. That should be about like eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So I wanted to do it where it was more of a just a build and get, get people involved. It's like, oh, man, I'm invested. I just watched these black belts, brown belts. And granted... Two teams have two blue belts that are on their team. So with the quintet, you, you, the team captain just picks his team. I don't have to. So with that being said, uh, when you watch that first quintet match, you're actually watching super fights going on because these are now. It could potentially be the black belt group that's from Hensel Gracie Austin. That's a black belt group, and there's only a purple belt and a blue belt that's in there, and the other guys are, mm -hmm. you know. And then you've got like other black belts. So you're watching super fights, and you really don't realize it. You just you're just thinking it's a quintet, it's a team. Oh, it's like no, you're you're watching super fights right now. I mean, especially if you've seen uh, past quintets. Um, I, I my, my favorite one was the one that uh, Craig Jones was involved in, you know, and, and him and Boogeyman. All, it's just there's oh, some yeah. really oh yeah, those quintets are like amazing. He hit that toe hold on mm. Boogeyman whenever mm. he had him mm. he or whenever did the that leg. That was crazy. That was sick. I had to rewind that literally like five times. Me too. Like that was me at the gym the next, oh <laughs> the next week trying to get in like, there. I would purposely make people do that. Yeah, I would, like, I would, I would, I would, hey man, put your leg right here, and they, they would feel safe. And I'm like, let me try. No, it. you don't. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and I, and then I, I kept watching a lot of his other videos, and he was talking about punch it, punch for the toe hold. You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay. Okay, a lot of people were pissed off at me for a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I've seen one of those videos too. Oh, he man. was he was somewhere else, right? Mm. Like over, overseas. I know you did and, a and lot when of he traveling. Did it, you can see the guy's foot like bend. Yeah, like, Ooh. yeah. You know, a lot of people were mad at me, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, it I'm, works. I'm, I'm the I'm the Matt Devil. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. So you you earned that name, huh? That man, yeah, yeah. That one is Geraldo. Yeah, yeah. I, I the the way I like to train. I'm a lot of people say I get stoic. When I compete, I just know what I want and what I want to do. Not to say I'm like the best, but I'm I'm sure no slouch. You know, I just I really like jujitsu and I get nerdy about it. So I, if I compete, I have no problem saying pull guard. None. I know a lot of people would be like, "Oh, damn, you're a bitch," <laughs> but it's like I have no. You got to think about who you're fighting. If I'm fighting in the absolute, I'm pulling guard, dude. I'm not gonna try to take down a 200 pound dude. It, let alone even 180, because then I know he's he like really wants it. You know, he might have gotten bronze, and he's like, I want gold. Absolute, <laughs> this dude's small. You know, and they, they're gonna go after you. You know, so you just got you just gotta you gotta pick your uh, pick your battles. You know. Yeah, in my head, I'm a lot bigger than I <laughs> than I am. See? Okay, so you play a big man game? <laughs> no, not necessarily anymore. But I used to. I used to, so I've competed in the past. Not anything crazy. It's like local tournaments. What's your weight? I weigh about one sixty five right when now. I wake up in the morning. Yes. Okay, but what did you weigh when you competed? Uh, when I, I, I competed at two hundred and what? I competed at one eighty five. I didn't weigh two hundred, but I, I was like. Okay, I, what did you weigh? I weighed you? about. I weighed like one ninety two. I was like, you you used to be one ninety two. Yes. Really? Yeah, I could. So oh. like, um. Here recently on purpose because of competing, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm sick of competing against these dudes that are 185, you know, like at 185, and I was like, I know some of these dudes will cut weight, and I'm not trying to cut, cut weight, and I'm not. So at the top. you would always compete at your optimal. You really wouldn't yes. cut weight. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do anything, but I'm like, they're so freaking strong. Yeah. And so I had earlier this year, I, I actually just got, I'm about a month out of an injury. I, I had separated a rib on, 
on this side. And so this is my fourth week back, but I took about oh. seven weeks where I wasn't really able yeah. to do anything. And so, but before that injury, it was a freak thing that happened. I separated this one about three years ago and it took about seven they, weeks. They say the most common injuries are ribs and knees, mm. you know, my I've, knees I've are okay. Mine, I think I've I, had mine pop out on purpose. A guy like jumped on me with his ribs and yeah, and that can like getting in your car. Oh you yeah, know, just yeah. M- making love, like <laughs> it affects everything. Oh bro, it's, coughs, it sucks. It sucks. I feel good this morning. Some of you know went neon belly for, it, and I'm like, you know, it's it's still in my head. So yours wasn't totally ripped. It was just like a pop. It was a it was a pop, okay. and so Come on, mine got torn. Like no, mine right. mine didn't tear. Uh, this one when I did three years ago, it was it was a lot worse. Yeah. But um, I had already started. I was like, okay, I'm gonna start lifting again because before I found jujitsu, I was like pretty. I've always done something. So I was like heavy, like into t- lifting and trying to get strong. And so, um, when I found, when I did find jujitsu, I, I, all my time went to jujitsu and it kind of went out of lifting and some other things okay, okay, and okay. like that. And so I was like, I'm going to start lifting at least like three days a week. I, and I started, uh, my diet. I paid more attention to that. Yeah. I'm going to get light. I'm going to compete at one set, like under one, you know, 170. That's what I'm going to, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to be at. Yeah. And so, and then, and then my injury, I was about 173 and it was like jujitsu world league or whatever, you know, just a local tournament that was coming up. But we, we, you know, there's a lot of good things we hear about jujitsu yeah, world league. Yeah. And it's the one that just passed. It was actually supposed to be a date like two weeks before, but they ended up pushing it back. Um, there was a conflict or something with jujitsu world league and scheduling, but yeah, so I missed that. And so now I'm like, okay, I need to get back. I'm, I'm back in the gym. This is my, uh, my fourth week back in there and then get my cardio back to where I feel like I'm good and I'm gonna need to work some lifting, <laughs> lifting Dude, back in. But then that, if I, that's the thing, man, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, like you said, it starts in the, <clears throat> you know, getting your diet right. Yeah. It starts in the kitchen. I'm wanting to gain, some weight now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm almost 50, dude. And I don't feel like it, but I just want to get a little bit bigger, a yeah. little, little bit more durable. I want to be 175 before I'm 50. It's a doable goal. It's just, I need to stuff. You got to stuff your face. Yeah. yeah. Strong, I, usually when I compete, I would compete at 154 mm-hmm. and, and I'm five, I'm five eleven. So most dudes that I competed with, they were a lot shorter than me. And I always felt strong. So I would just throw people on like a rag doll. And I remember one time I used to, uh, I trained for a, a long time with Pablo Silva. And uh, he asked me when I was with PSBJJ, he asked me, will you drop down to Light Feather? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was doing so well at that tournament. Uh, I had a guy in an, uh, this dude, like, I had a dude in an Omoplata and I had to roll. And then I got caught in a rolling Omoplata scenario. And then I postured it up, and the dude threw up a triangle so fast. <laughs> he moves so quick. Oh, Why are you man, doing that? <laughs> man. And Pablo, I could just hear him. I could just hear his, like, disappointment <laughs> because I was doing really well. And I felt so strong. But I, after that, I felt so weak because I was literally 138 pounds when I'm super optimal at featherweight, 154. Because I can just put on a gi, and I'd be, I'd be, like, good to go. Mm-hmm. But doing that, I just, like, because I like to eat. You know, I just didn't feel feel right. So it's like you got guys that are like, what'd you say you were? Like, I wake up 165. and But they were like dropping. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. Were, they had not been. Oh, I, I, yeah. you know, you can tell there's a, you know, and then I I like, I don't mind wrestling or trying. I'm not some wrestler or anything, but I stand up to Neither feel grips. I? I, li- I like pulling guard. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where I want to be anyways. Even if you take me down, I was like, Are hey. you a Dele Hiba player? Uh, a, a little bit. A little bit. You're, I, I you're go a tall guy. I'm surprised you're not a spider guard. Are you? Are you a gi or a no gi guy? I, I prefer. I prefer no gi. This oh. morning I, I trained gi. Okay. And and that's what I end up gi, with spider. Spider. Yeah. I know spider. You got to be because my favorite thing is either if I'm in the gi, but I, I let my stuff bleed over. My mm-hmm. no gi and my gi game are are, are kind of. I like, I like half guard and I like butterfly guard, because you can even implement that right in no gi super easy, especially right. butterfly. And you throw your legs up and you got your leg locks. Yeah, I'm, I like butterfly, and that's why I train with uh, Jonathan Satava at Peak Jiu Jitsu as well, nice. as long as my my other gym, and that's his thing. My, I feel like the the years that I've, I've trained with him, you know, is butterfly. He's a butterfly wizard. Like honestly, I have to go because I've heard yeah. so many good things. Yeah, like seriously. Yeah, he's he's right, literally right down the street. So we're we're in League City. If you're watching this off of Main Street 518, and so is Peak Jiu Jitsu. It's right at 45 and 518, and so in. An hour and we, a half. Tra- I'll be we, there. We training after this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No gi? Yeah, no, I'm tra- at 12 o'clock. There's no, uh, gi? no gi. I'm I'm staying. <laughs> 12 o'clock. Um, no which, gi. which one? Which one? <laughs> I'm, uh, dude, I'm serious. Because I, I was yeah. actually wanting to train today, and I didn't know where I was going to train. And now I do. Yeah, I, yeah. 12, 12 o'clock yeah, at Peak okay. Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. Um, and yeah, Butterfly, it's really... 
and I get to go to a lot of gyms and, and I'm sure you have as well, but you can kind of see like people's teaching styles and just there's the, how technical it is and yeah. answering questions, being able to understand and, and in a way that makes sense. And so Jonathan's, he's great. You know, what's funny about that. Like I've been training a long, long, long time. So long where I, I remember <laughs> asking questions was like a bad thing. <laughs> you, you had to like absorb it physically. You literally had to absorb it physically. It was it was before anybody even knew what invisible jujitsu was. Like Hicks and Gracie has this thing, invisible jujitsu. It's there's things that I'm doing that you don't see. You know? That's just the same thing like when I first started, like you had to absorb it physically. Like and if you ask questions, eh, you, you're gonna learn it. You're gonna figure it out. Oh, you gotta get out of this triangle, you're gonna figure it out, you're gonna figure it out. <laughs> and then and then as the years like went on, you had people that literally would like teach more and share more. Because whereas before they felt like it was like some kind of, you know, knowledge, some Shaolin monk type stuff. It's like, dude, we're not doing anything with like, you know, that's special. You're like, show me how to do an arm bar, how to escape it. And then a lot of people wouldn't share it because they didn't want you to be, they didn't want to get bested. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I'm the type of guy I teach at a UFC Pearland. I have no problem saying, yeah, some of my students have tapped me out. And they have. I mean, I've been tapped out by my students. Um, that's because they're they're putting me in the position where I know, okay, this is justified. Yeah, you do have it. Cool. You know, whereas if they're mounting me and they're trying to go for a really sloppy arm bar, no, I'm not going to give you that. You know, but if it's like trapped in there, I'm like, all right, cool. Is he like putting it right? Is my elbow in right? But then I'm also being safe about it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you got guys that did not like getting tapped when I first started training and I was like a white belt and you had dudes that were like purple belts and they were like, Nope, Nope. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, I didn't know what it was like taking someone's back until I was a blue belt <laughs> almost because they just were like, beat the shit out of you and not let you like, no, you're, you're going to, if I give you an inch, you're going to take miles. And, and there are some people that do do that. Like you, you, uh, they need to learn and they're trying to learn how to move and they'll literally like, they'll, they'll hurt you and they don't really realize it. It's like, dude, get better technique. But you have some coaches and how they teach nowadays, it's so cool and it's so clean because they, they're very, very, like you said, they're very, very precise. You know, those who can do and those who can't teach. And then you have those that can do both. Like, I don't, I don't know if he, uh, if he still competes, but does uh, yeah. he still compete? Yeah, he just had a, um, a baby this year. So oh, okay, okay. he went and did East Coast Trials and he advanced to the second day. And then um, West Coast Trials, he was going to go out there as well. But the baby... Not to get into his business, but there were some reasons, like some complication stuff. You know, thank God everything is yeah, good yeah. with the baby, but they actually had it like right during That's that beautiful. thing. That's so, good. but so yeah, he's he's big on like uh, the trial ADCC, yeah, yeah. So he's he's big yeah, he on, won he's big East, on ADCC. he won East Coast Trials. Um, that would be an amazing some years back, and so he was right there ADCC, okay. and then um yeah, so he's he's competed there, dude. That, I I think Nogi, yeah, everyone's been saying it for quite a while, but I think honestly, man, Nogi Nogi is the future. You know, right. Uh, it's easier to watch. It, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. It's more entertaining. I mean, there, there are things you can do for gi jujitsu to make it entertaining. Um, like one of the main things is you have to throw away like. I'm not going to say throw it away, but you know, how some people, they want to they need to get things started right. in order to get the worm guard going. You've got to pull out the lapel and you got to wrap it around, wrap it around. And you, you might you might pop off a sweep or a submission. But it'll take you at least two minutes to get it going. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have to get rid of things that take a long, and, and that just sucks because then you're just ruining somebody's game. So, but nogi, oh yeah, <laughs> it's you can't hide in that. You know, I have seen some dudes. They said some tournaments now are like making it legal where you can hold the shorts mm. and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, I, I, that's always been illegal. I don't ever remember that being legal. But yeah, you hold someone's shorts, mm. you just rip them off oh, <laughs> in some ways like how is this shouldn't be legal has some good like you know uh nogi gear at least yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah there is a lot of cool uh you know nogi gear and all that stuff and it's it's always i mean it gets expensive too but at least it's cheaper than usually buying a gi <laughs> yeah i mean like i'm not trying to plug them but uh i'm not trying to plug them but uh i mean my favorite nogi shorts nogi industries They've been around for years. Uh, I got a pair of shorts. <laughs> I got a pair of Gracie Baja shorts still to this day. They're over 10 years old. And, man, they're they're tanks. You know, <laughs> uh, they're tanks. I usually wear them when I go swimming. 
Uh, and then I got another pair of red. I just I like that. You got you have some good strong ones. Those are like fifty bucks. And some geese, geese can be expensive, but you can get like a Fuji gi. Or, yeah. You know tatami. They're still around. Yeah. You know you go out of your way and I have one. I got to show you roll at home. It literally looks like a tuxedo. So whenever I wear it, everyone at the gym they're like, oh man, I think it was like two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, I saw one that showed up a show you roll IBJJF approved super light. It's only three pounds. It was, yeah, $300 is the price on it. But I was like, oh, it is so pretty. And it's show your roll. It's like Damn. the, I don't know, the it's the show your roll. The yeah, fancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's some geese it, that blew my mind. I remember uh, a friend of mine, I was teaching him privates. <clears throat> and he paid me by giving me Hyperfly. Came up with a, a judo jujitsu hybrid gi. Mm -hmm. And it has patches on the elbows and patches on the knees. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. It's so thick. Yeah, say like, it's probably it, rough. It's uh, so thick. I like to wear it at open mat. You know, and, <laughs> Good and luck. Whenever, yes. whenever I'm like training with people, I like cross face the crap out of them and stuff like that. But that thing is so thick and it's completely 100% illegal. <laughs> I can't wear it. And, <laughs> I wear. Yeah. and the only reason why is because it has the patches on. Uh, so what did they do the very next year? They designed it again and they put the patches on the inside. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> so, but it's a real, it's a workhorse gi that, that I will never have to buy a gi if I didn't want to for the rest of my life. Do you remember Hyperfly coming out with the white belt Dan, Dan series? A white belt Dan? White belt Dan. It was just a character, a character. I yeah. actually I interviewed him a long time ago, but man, I wish they still did white belt Dan. It was a guy that was supposed to be a Hyperfly mm -hmm. employee that was a white belt. And he's like, oh, I think I'll train tomorrow. He'd show up just to, it was like these little character oh. skits that they would do, but they hadn't released him probably in about two years. That sounds cool. And I don't know if Dan, because he was an actual employee. Yeah. I, was I, he a white belt? He actually was a white belt. And I messaged him. I was like, dude, will you let me uh, do an interview? He's like, I got to check with, you know, my bosses and all that stuff. They're like, yeah. But it was really sick. They sent me like a Hyperfly Houston Rockets collab because they knew we were down here in the Houston what? area. And like okay. a, a patch, you can't teach hard. I really like that. That, yeah, that stuff is actually pretty cool and like a, a lanyard and stuff. I'm like, I, I like that. They gave you some swag. Yeah, they gave me some swag. And I, I just I missed that. So White Belt Dan, I was actually thinking about him because there's a card that they sent where he was dressed up as the Grinch. It was a big part of their marketing for a while. And then all the like, so all of a he sudden, was a true employee. Yes. That really worked there. Real, real White Belt as well. He worked in the warehouse. Wow. And they would do all these. It was funny because he would wear his belt really high and they would just make fun. They would just make fun of it. And it's like the whole thing is like, I'll train, you know, oh yeah, oh yeah, maybe I'll train tomorrow. Or maybe, maybe tomorrow. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like, you know, there's some guys that do like, uh, what's his name? Master Ken? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was like, it was a thing and like then, that. And yeah. you got, have you, uh, you got, you know, Classy Grappler? Mm, that's a, so, a social media account. Yeah. 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 yeah he, he trains jujitsu black belt and he's just, it's just funny. You know I me? Mean? Same thing with like Hanato Lalanja, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, he, he was at my show, my first show. That oh, for I real? Yeah. He was a commentator on my first show. He, he played himself. His, his name is, you know, Shaw Green, you know, his real name. Uh, but he, he was, uh, you know, Hanato Lalanja for the show. <laughs> and then he was himself after. You know, the dude was a, he's a character, dude. But but he's a, he's a legit, he's a legit black belt. You know, so is classy. Um, I used to train with him a long time ago at Revo uh -huh. in uh, downtown. I haven't seen him in a while. Probably work or whatever. He's like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> His interviews leading up to the Gabby Garcia Craig Jones fight were hilariously awesome, and I think that some people. Cause I had teammates, you know, in a group text, they were like, what is this guy doing? But they didn't see, or they didn't follow it up. They didn't to know the lead who up, he was, who he was Still, right. Oh. I guess they didn't even see those interviews. I'm like, if you even saw the interviews or knew who he was, it's funny. Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. if you don't know, and it's oh, like, you're talking about when CGI was actually going on. Yes. The interview was like, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Those interviews. Yeah. Um, they were just like, that put so many eyes on him. That put a lot more, cause a lot of people in the community, I remember, oh, <laughs> I remember Guys at Gracie Baja, when you would go to different seminars and stuff, they didn't like that, you know, and I would go to like Eddie Bravo seminar, you know, um, I went to a Hanacho Lananja seminar. He was at, uh, Victor Poses at the dark side one time. And I remember coming back and everyone be like, Oh, why you go see that guy? He's a clown. He's not a real person. Blah, blah, blah. But they thought he was like real, you know, you know, they thought he was real. It was, I was like, no dude, it's a, He's wearing a belt that's like 23 times, you know, like, it's like, really? It's got to be a joke. It's a character. Yeah, it's a yeah. character. And, but he, he's a legit, he actually is a legit black belt. He's an Eddie Bravo black belt. 
And I, there's a video. I've always wondered if it was real or not. But there's a video with, uh, remember that one with him and Chris Weidman? Mm-hmm. And he was like, and Weidman, he was, talk, he was talking to Weidman while Weidman was giving an interview. But then he like, Weidman stood up and they got into a little light tussle. A really light, and you were thinking, oh, uh, Hanato was going to get, and then he just judo tosses the shit out of him. You know, uh, so he's, he, I mean, he's a legit dude, but I still don't even know if that was real. I don't know. I've always questioned it, but um, his teaching and how he is, you got all these caricatures, man. They're, they're everywhere. I think it's cool. And they're doing that with like, Hyperfly, some random ass, mm-hmm. you know, guy. That's, that's funny. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a good gimmick, too. It's a good prom- uh, promotional tool. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know. Maybe we should do that for our fight promos, you know? I think so. Just have some, I don't, I don't know. What, what could you use though if you did a fight promotion? You know, like a grandma. <laughs> it had, yeah, it could be a person. I, I think it would have to be a person that actually. Does. I've actually tried because uh, I want to promote jujitsu even more. I mean, I'm doing it in Katy and uh, like my show, and I've always had a. I plan on doing jujitsu. I, I want to until I die. You know, I've just really I just enjoy it uh, as a lifestyle. I enjoy it uh, for the people you meet. Um, I'm really like I've said it over and over and over again probably sound like a broken record um, I've always been about the community and I love how it's it's growing it's still a baby it really is the thing that you know Craig Jones did with CJI um, stuff that Mo's doing with ADCC I hope that some things turn around with like IBJJF you know stuff like that uh, you've got other promotions that are coming around World League and so many more and more and more and more and more people are getting to know it. I've always had this thing. I, I've thought about like, huh, why not use somebody that's like involved that you would never know? Jiu-Jitsu grandma. <laughs> have you seen her? I Instagram? have, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I, I've, you know, reached out to her a little bit on Instagram here and there. She's from Alabama, you know, uh, sweet, sweet woman. You know, you see her always. Is she had a Gracie Baja? Is that the same person? Yeah, I'm it's, it, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She, there's only one Jiu-Jitsu grandma. yeah. <laughs> there's only one but uh th- there are some other people that do train jujitsu uh they don't have huge followings i don't think like her um but you have there are some older women and some older men you know I, I hope to be one of those people one day i mean you said you started training in 2019 but if you had any kind of to me i think if it was if you had a promotion like a jujitsu promotion i think uh it would be cool if it was like an older person you know just to see someone that's like oh they're still doing it. Yeah. You know, because I'm having my shot in Katy, and uh, I just feel like that area, that community, every, every community has its, you know, different kind of demographic and whatnot. But when you have, like, that area, there's a lot of, like, you know, uh, people and families, like right. families. But when you think about fighting and MMA, jiu-jitsu, boxing, especially boxing, you're not going to really see any old people. You know, you're not going to see anyone old doing boxing. But jujitsu and to have that maybe be your like a, a mascot it makes sense. I, this a uh, it's 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 empowering. I think uh, if you it was like a promoter, like do we have gear or merchandise? You can make it funny and comical. If you got a promotion though, I don't. I think you can make it funny, but then uh, it would be really cool if it was someone old, older, you know? Because you you're just looking at like oh man. <laughs> if they can do it, yeah, my kids can do it, or I could do it, yeah, right. Have have grandma like you know do, doing a little video and yeah, bouncing her kid on the knee. You know, Katie's yeah. kind of like I know you mentioned. There's a lot of families out there. Mm-hmm. Every time you know we stream high school football outside of combat sports, but every time I I look up, there's a new high school in Katie that's like a giant high school. There's They're a huge. lot of building going yeah. on. There's a lot of you know like industry. Um, churches there's a lot of families that are out there so there's a need for all of those things yeah expanding construction highways all that stuff but katie is growing growing. yeah houston's growing the katie area is growing uh the whole area like bridgeland and whatnot all all that is just even out in like pearland you know you go out in pearland for sharon and whatnot it's it's all becoming like what the woodlands looks like right now Mm -hmm. you know you got to i remember the beginning of woodlands was like nothing you know even pearland Par- Par- uh, not Pearland, Alvin and Manville. Oh, yeah. It was like nothing. And Pearland, eh, too, there was really nothing. Woodlands was just starting to get, you know, its thing. It was like, uh, it was a place to, to go. But it literally, you're driving in a neighborhood. If you don't know that neighborhood, you're going to get lost. Yeah. 
it's even now like with the trees <laughs> yeah all the trees yeah. in there so i can imagine yeah, yeah. yeah. before it was even built it's a out. very secluded it's its own ecosystem it is, they don't yeah. have to go anywhere you know they got their own grocery stores and and whatnot there uh you no. know like alex the, the gracie bajas that are over there yes i mean they're like in a great spot and kids you know training over there so yeah we'll go film up there and like even on the way up there, so like at Alex's because the, the mm. MMA fights are for mm. Elevate, we'll go film and, and do some promos with some of the fighters, which is always fun. We love doing it. But like I got to find a Whataburger and I'm like punching it in my phone. There's a Whataburger, Whataburger and I'm like, where is Whataburger? <laughs> it's surrounded by trees off this little thing. Usually, you know, on Interstate 45, you, you look it, up bro. and you see the signs over there. It's like you have to you have yeah. to punch it in because you have to know what's coming up because... Uh, yeah, there's no way you're just gonna accidentally find Man. the Whataburger. Man. Is it? Is it? I don't even know if it. I haven't looked it up on Instagram or nothing, or on uh, Google. I haven't looked it up. Is it true that Whataburger really did go to Chicago? I think that they did sell. I I did hear that they sold to a company that's based out of Chicago. Okay, so it's not like they sold out and they left us. Right. Okay, they just like sold. So there's Whataburgers up there now. No, no, no. I think they did sell out to. Um, instead of being a Texas based company. Well, no, I don't, I don't, I mean like sell out, like completely, like go away. Oh yeah. No, 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 uh, Yeah. Yeah. Someone cashed in, cashed out. I mean, <laughs> and at you, some you, point you, you, want your, you want your brand someplace <laughs> else. It's like, why not? You know? Yeah. Like I, I've never, I know some people, I'm, I'm a burger guy mm -hmm. and water burger for fast burgers, fast food burgers. That, that's, that's the, the goal. That's yeah. the, the. That's the uh, the standard, the, the, the standard, right? Yeah. yeah, I like that. That's the standard. I agree. No, I like it too. but when you have gourmet burgers, then now you get into a different little party. Mm -hmm. You know, you got like Papa's Burgers. You know, you, there was a place called Sammy's Wild Game. Oh yeah, you, you remember that? We shot, I shot a video there. It was on I ten. Yeah, that, yeah, bro. Yeah, you ever had the the uh, Python Chili? I don't know what I had. Yeah, um, so we literally, we shot video and did a giveaway whenever me and Kurt worked for the radio station. And so we used to do a bunch of these video give, like giveaways. This is honestly how we started doing video mm -hmm. for the radio station doing giveaways. And so we went up to Sammy's and it was just, they would just give us like eat this and we would eat it on camera and then be like, hey, share this video out and we're going to give away a gift certificate, gift cards or whatever they had. And we'd get like 30, 50,000 views on these videos oh, on man. Facebook and social yeah. media. So it really helped the business and we had fun doing it. Cause it was content for us and stuff. And you so. probably had like a bison burger. You we probably had, had a jackalope because they, they would mix all their meats. You know, uh, I got, I got there one time and I was lucky. I, I told, I told, I told the, uh, the dude, can I have like a slider, like do Python sliders. If you have snake, snake yeah. is good. Yeah. Snake is good. It's healthy. It's lean. I mean, where's the fat, you know? Uh, yeah. Burgers, gourmet burgers. This is different. We're going to, I'm talking about hamburgers now, <laughs> like, like wimpy. <laughs> a burger for I've, Tuesday. I have a friend. It's actually Kurt, but he uh, he's from Nebraska. But he says that he doesn't like Whataburger because the burgers are too big and it's cold by the time he gets done finishing it. And I'm like, if that's your complaint, <gasps> that's hilarious. Like the burger's too big. It's too big. It's too big. And we're like, well, get the Whataburger Junior. So that's what he does. Yeah, he gets the Whataburger yeah. Junior. But he's like, no, I'd rather have. He says like Wendy's. I'm like, bro, Wendy's is great. I love love some Wendy's, but if Man. there's Whataburger and your and your one complaint is it's too big. it's too big, then that's just <laughs> that's hilarious. But uh, as we were talking about judging burgers, I kind of do the same thing with Mexican food. Like there's, mm -hmm. you know, like the your papacitos or your old tempo over here. And then you have like your, your hole in the wall or the taco trucks. There's like different, Man. there's different classes for like, yeah. how much am I paying? Am I going to pay like $50 for, for fajitas or am I going to pay like $12? Yeah. <laughs> you know? it all, it also, I think it also depends on what you, what you're going to go and get. Are you going to go and get some menudo? Right. Or right. You, uh, you want some barbacoa and is your barbacoa yeah. like really good right <laughs> yeah. or are you gonna have some pastor i yeah. know some pastor even like the chicken you know or it's just dry mm -hmm. you're like oh man i gotta drown it in salsa and like, yeah oh, but what if it's like so flavorful it's orgasmic you keep <laughs> going to that same spot so you gotta let me know where, if you find some really really dope areas yeah like do you do the taco truck thing i do not right now <laughs> just because of the way, the way I'm eating right oh, now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, um, no, I, yeah, we do a lot of taco trucks. And it's funny, I know I keep going back to this, but me and Kurt, we used to have a segment called Talk of Taco. Bro. And that's what we did. And it was it was video segments, and we would go we would go to people's houses. They would cook us tacos. We'd go to Mexican restaurants. We got into video because of, because of food. Kurt yeah. had a background in video. We met doing radio, and we found, at least for our area, who doesn't like tacos? And if, you know, and there's... There's people's like stories, 
you know, like, well, why does this restaurant serve it this way? Because on oh, my family recipe, or I just found that it works this way. Or like, and we went to people's houses, you know, who makes the best taco? We would just ask, show us pictures, boom, we'll come up and film. And are you willing to be on camera? And we'll put this video out. So all this stuff is out, it's out there. There's a lot of there's like a lot that. of video of me eating food on camera. <laughs> I know he's like a- ASMR. Here's the one ninety three. Not, not quite like that, but yeah. we would eat a t- <laughs> uh, ton of food. But um, and then we found that people would pay us money to to film commercials for their businesses. Like we didn't even realize that that was a job at first. Oh, and we're bro. like, we yeah. need to start. We need to start a video company. That's how Clear Life started. And then live streaming, and then we found combat sports because I started training, and then I was like, "Dude, it's a, there's it's a need. A, it's a cool thing. There, there is a need. There is a need. And uh, you know, I mean, you took me in your back area, you know, checking out your uh, your uh, your booth, your portable. Oh my god, that I, I told you, man, that is a wet dream. <laughs> you know, someone that's actually you know into broadcasting. I, I've done stuff with Channel Two. I've done stuff with like just uh, I've been a camera operator. I, I've even worked on film projects before, gaffing, grip. I've been a DP before. I've uh, I edit, but I edit a little bit. I'm more of a I, I'm more a guy who is in the pre-production and then in the production. You know, post. They're geniuses. I know. I got a buddy of mine. He's an editor. My God, he he. That's a whole master class he can teach me. You know. But when you're like putting stuff together, that's that's where I'm at. So when I'm looking at that back there, I'm like, wow, <laughs> what you guys are doing, you'll probably want to do. I think it's amazing. You know, uh, it's it, this is your platform and you're trying to use your platform to give other people a platform. Um, it, it's it, that's a community thing. I mean, what you're doing, you can't be biased at all. You know, you, right. you, you, you can't be, mm-hmm. you know, and you're just you're sharing so much. I mean, I know we're getting right back. It's like full circle. <laughs> And that's what that's what it should be about. What you what you guys are doing is beautiful, you know. You, you're building a good team. You got a good group of guys. I wish I had a group of friends when I was in college. Uh, one was uh, half Filipino, half Vietnamese. The other one was Indian. Uh, the other one was half Filipino, half Swiss. And then you had me. And we all got together and we were like a film group, you know, we were like, I, I did my first independent, uh, short film, uh, submitted to the Houston filmmaker showcase. You know, I got to meet guys in, the, uh, city hall who were part of the Texas, uh, filmmakers commission. And I've always wanted to do like film projects. I always wanted to produce projects. And I remember my buddies, we all got together and we created our own production team. We called it four nations United films and all three of them dropped out. Mm. <laughs> And didn't they all do stuff totally different now? I'm the only one that's like really w- wanting to still do film stuff. Uh, I'm huge in jujitsu, and I kept the name. And I called it. I still call it Four Nations United, and I can do that. I'm black, white, Hispanic, and Cherokee. So it was like, oh, <laughs> and then for you know how you you're talking about the uh, the guy white belt, you know, yeah, and you're making it funny. I was like, dude, I'm gonna make shirts, and my film company is gonna be called F and and so when people ask me, hey, who are you with? I'm effing you. <laughs> so it, was like, it was like, you can do that. Use your acronyms and play on words, you know. But what you guys are doing, I wish those guys had, like, stayed with. Because I'm, I'm still learning a lot, too. Like, you know, with cameras and whatnot. Man, technology, man. It changes so fast. Uh, the, the equipment you guys have is probably, like, way, you know, it's brand new. Yeah, two years, three yeah, years. Yeah, it is all brand know. new, yeah. But it's like what it was when I was in, man, it's still usable, but it's like Stone Age. You know, you can we can do stuff now being more portable. I know right now we're doing a podcast, and I told you uh, earlier, I, I've always wanted to do a podcast, and I want to do one where I can go to different gyms, and I can just set up and go. Easy. And go. And, and I went out and bought, you know, like I was telling you earlier, that Nomano, and it really... I, I I probably imagine you'll probably get one in a year you know if you guys really and I'll, I have no problem like I'll, I'll bring it over you know we, we can fart around with it you know it's it's what you guys are doing is cool because you're going to go out and you're going to meet all these different people and you're trying to you're sharing knowledge uh, it's just you're, you're just you're doing so much and you think that you probably aren't you know but it's just those little things. You just started training jujitsu, and y- you see what it can be on a physical side. 
But then when you get people and you and you got people that want to talk or either tell a story, and it should be rooted in truth, you know, they want to tell a story or they want to uh, sell a merchandise or anything like that, or just you you're sharing so much with me right now. I mean, this right here, what you're doing is like cool. I know I don't know if we got off on a tangent right now. I'm over here like <laughs> no. I'm over here like giving you a lot of love, but dude, what you guys you. are building is like it's it's just awesome. It it can it has no place else to go, but. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. Now, a lot of the stuff, we just kind of figure it out as, as we go. You know, even for the space, it's like, okay, we got this many square feet. What can we make work? How can we best utilize the space? We got mm-hmm. a trailer. We got a bunch of gear. You know, how can we make this make this work? And so this is kind of, we just had to pick with something, run with it, permitting. And that was all learning a learning thing. And so now we just trying to make sure we stay on track with the business side and connect with the right people that you know get good advice and and wisdom yeah. and stuff because that's the other thing because like we can have we have a bunch of passion projects you know that that we wish we could do but it's like well we can still do those but what what is going to help keep us in business like what you know and yeah. all that stuff so yeah. it's a it's a juggling thing that i mean especially doing, if you guys want to like you know i I've got, I've got a few few buddies we're all like looking for other people because we want to do like independent films you know, and that's always been our thing. You know, let's do an independent film, and then you, you learn when you start doing movies. Uh, what's the easiest thing to sell? How do we get it distributed? What's the easiest thing to? You do a drama. That shit. It's better be Oscar material, stuff like that. But horror, the things do. You, you you have your passion projects, and your passion projects, whatever you're doing now. I feel like like even I'm trying to do a show. You know, I want to do a, a fight promo. What's my ultimate goal? I want to produce fucking movie movies. You know, I want to do movies. I want to get into films. I I like script writing. I like uh, producing. I like seeing all that stuff. I like getting teams together yeah. and building something from nothing. You know, uh, yeah. You guys definitely have your passion projects. Yeah, Jake. He's worked on some stuff before in college. Like, but um, yeah, we've never messed with the with the movie. And we script commercials and and have done segments and stuff and we do tv shows but they're more kind of rea- they're like reality esque, mm-hmm. you know and so but that is something that hopefully in the future you know we'll have time or maybe uh play with i think that, yeah that would be that would be fun oh yeah oh yeah so. it's, it's something you like you do on the side you know or uh or you can probably go the uh the boyhood route you, know, you ever seen that film Mm-mm. shit took 12 years to make they took uh, this one young man, I think he was like eight, and they shot it in 12 years. And the movie's called Boyhood. If I remember right, uh, I think it's a Texas filmmaker. I don't know if it was Richard Linklater or uh, or another guy. But it was just the fact that it took him 12 years. It's actually really cool. If it's the same, the same yeah, character oh, going same, through oh, his yeah, thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's the same same people. Yeah. They were all... I remember when it was first coming out, you, know, there weren't, you didn't see variety. You couldn't see like who was what, why, and how. You know, You just heard it after the fact. You know, um, but after a while, I think he was like 12 at the time. Then they started writing about it online and you started really understanding, holy crap, this is intensive, uh, very extensive because it's the same actors, like these same actors. And supposedly they were all like under contract. Yeah, we're going to be back in five more years. <laughs> like, How do you, you know, the risk of that? You don't know. Any, anything can happen. Anything. Yeah. Anything. An accident I mean, could happen. Dude, like all kinds of stuff. You know, like heaven forbid, you know, right. You know, I, I would never wish that on anyone, but it's like, you never know. Yeah, and the risk was so worth it. You know, I, I believe it garnered a lot of awards and whatnot, but it, boyhood, boyhood, real good film. I'll write that down. Yeah. Okay, check it out. I hadn't yeah. heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a cinephile at heart. You know, it's cool. Some really, really good movies. So what's your what would you say for the fire and brimstone? What makes this event a success for you? Pulling it off. Pulling it off, literally. Um, I, I, we can get into that kind of conversation at, at another time as to why it didn't get pulled off the first two times. Um, I've always wanted to do. A quintet. I've always wanted to do something that was team oriented. I've always wanted to do something that was a collaborative effort. Um, I mean, hell, like when I started it again, a lot of people were pretty excited and they were like, so who are you going to get? It's like, you know, I've got uh, <clears throat> uh, Albert Hebron. He runs uh, Grand Prix Grappling. He's been around since before 2010. 
He's literally so old school. He was around when there was like Grappler's Quest. Grappler's Quest was one of the first ones. Uh, Naga was is like old as hell. Naga is old. It's owned, I believe, by the Baileys now, but it was owned by a guy named Kit. You know, uh, uh, I don't. His last name, I believe, was Kit Dale. No, no, no. Kit Dale is the uh, the Australian dude. His name was Kit, but I can't remember his last name. But mm-hmm. he was literally he was a white guy, and he was also bald. He also uh, had alopecia, so he was on every Naga old school card. I remember that with that guy, um, and of course he sold it off. So they're really, really old grappling tournaments, and I've known Elbert for years. Everyone in Houston they know Elbert. They know Grand Prix grappling, um, and he he only puts on jujitsu tournaments. And he's always wanted to do a super fight thing. And I went to him and a few other black belts in Houston and business owners. And I asked him just their advice. You know, here's my idea for a show. Here's what I'd like to do. Here's what I want to, here's what I've just been dreaming of. You know, I want to do something that's a collaborative effort. And I want to bring the community together. Because at the time, it wasn't as divided. To me, I think in some ways it is a little divided. Because you have some people, you can't go to that gym. Or they just... If if they piss on it, it's theirs. Don't touch it. Don't go there. You know, and I'm more like you know, like we can all eat, we can all learn from each other. You know, we can all co co uh, coexist and intermingle. You know, um, so when I started getting my show together, I went to like Elbert. I went to a lot of these other different guys, and I was like, let's do a collaboration, a true quintet. And here's my idea, and to have Grand Prix grappling on my show. Awesome. And then when uh, the guys at Hensel Gracie told me they wanted to be part of it, wow, that's a that's one of the biggest gyms in Houston right now due to Brian Marvin. You know, there, there's Hensel Gracie's like populating everywhere, which is really, really cool. And then to have Gracie Baja, you know, which I didn't think would happen, but uh, a really good friend of mine, Chad Holland, is a team captain for that. He got that going for me. And it's like, well, I got Gracie Baja. I've got Hensel Gracie. And then, you know, I've been... Uh, a Revolution Dojo student for quite a while. And uh, when I asked Jeff Messina, can we build a Revo team? And it was like, let's see if it can happen. And he, he let me know. He was like, you know, we're really a super fight guy. We're really like single matches. And I'm like, okay. And I was just super, super, super happy when um, Chris Roberson like stepped up and was like, I'll, I'll help you build a team, you know, because he was part of my first show and my second show. Um, even when those quintets fell through, because he knew what my, my dream was, the goal and to have those three major gyms, Henzo, Gracie Baja, and Revolution Dojo, those are the three biggest gyms in Houston. And by no means do I, do I wish this show was going to be like huge? I, I hope. That's what I would like, you know. Everyone would like, you know, to see a show, people show up to your party. You know, that's, that's essentially what I'm doing. I remember when Seth Daniels, a fight to win, first said that he, he started his tournaments. He said, I just want to put on a party for my friends. It was something to that effect. And that's what it is. It's like you want to throw an event, you know. It's like, hey, you know, I hear all these guys. Come and hang out, you know. And uh, I hope it'll be big. Uh, and then have combat sports coverage. Like I said, you got a, another guy coming in who he's a, he's another promoter. I'm not, I'm not mad at him. I'm not ugly with him. I'm not. Uh, I like Tom. It's like come in and build a team. And not only is his team, it's, it's three different gyms. Dark side. Haven Jiu Jitsu, and I'm sorry, it's four different gyms. It's Dark Side, uh, Haven Jiu Jitsu, because there's two guys from Haven. Uh, uh, Ruben, who owns, uh, I think he runs, I believe it's uh, Wolf's Den. Wolf's Den, and then Caleb Yonkers, you know, Flow Theory. So it's like, I've always just, I get really, really here about it. It's a collaborative effort, you know, pulling it off. That, that, like, seriously, that's the thing for me, because I've been trying to. I've tried to do this since 2019 and had some really, really, really just bad things happen. And it didn't, it didn't go the way I wanted to. It went a totally different way. So my mind goes back to that. That's why I'm kind of getting choked up a little bit here. And you already know a little bit of it. But it's like I, I couldn't do what I wanted to do the first time. And it was like I was really genuinely trying to do something for the people. You know, trying to do something for the community, for the spectators, for the grapplers, for the whole. Like I, I can't say it any other way. And that's just, that's how I've always been. It's like, I've always been that, that type of guy to, let me pull this off. And I, I, I have to make it happen 
before I die at least because I tried it in 2019 I tried it again in 2021 with the same the same weirdness that was going on and so I had to go revert back to like my first show it was a quintet and then it got sabotaged and I had to go to single matches okay I'm doing what everyone else is doing uh <laughs> 2021 I had it again I had teams got sabotaged oh my god here we're back to doing the same old crap and the only thing that's going to be different if you do single matches is the venue. That's that's the only thing that's always going to be different. Venue and then what you're putting in between. But when you're watching a match, you're just watching a match, you're just watching a match. I want to do something, and I've always wanted to do something that was team-based, unity, community, and just pulling this fucking thing off. Just actually doing it and just bringing everybody together. Because even now, I feel like a little bit that you do see some division with schools and stuff like that and i get it everybody has a rivalry oh this guy beat me last time da, da, da. that makes you better it does you know you got somebody that is your rival and they're beating the crap out of you <laughs> you're getting better <laughs> you, you might always be second to him but at least you're not going to be third or fourth or fifth you know but uh I, i've just never been a division guy so yeah pulling it off i don't know it's it's a rant again <laughs> awesome so September 29th, it's Sunday, taking place at Mo's Place, Katy, Texas. If someone wants to get tickets, if somebody wants to watch, how can they do that? Um, we got a good friend of mine, Skywood. Uh, he has his own uh, uh, production company called uh, Fight Flicks with another friend of uh, his named Chisholm. And uh, so you can go to fightflix.tv, fightflix.tv. And uh, we're doing a pay-per-view. It's like nineteen ninety nine, super, super cheap really really good uh, they do a live uh live broadcasting uh they're skeleton crew though so they're doing really really on the fly i've helped them out a few times with uh some of their shows main character jujitsu which is uh kamoy anderson's uh 10th planet austin with uh curtis hembroff i've uh worked that show just cameraman and uh he kamoy's had some really you know good fighters he also he also had a, a bunch of people from houston uh, all the Bailey sisters, they all compete on his card. He's had Joseph Chen, you know, he's had Versus you know, Andy P.T. Barilla. Barilla. Oh, man. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> like, I was on the mat just watching this. And I'm just like, oh. So when I got to see, you know, Joseph Chen and, and a few of those guys uh, competing on CGI, I mean, I'm a fanboy. I'm a practitioner and, and I'm a fanboy. But when you're on the mats and you're seeing it, it's, it's, it's really cool. And I honestly think I'm, I'm going to have probably a wild hair up my butt. I'm probably going to want to film my own show, just like one whole thing, just, just to do it. But uh, I, I really genuinely, uh, the reason why I say it is because I, I wasn't like involved when I, uh, I was like a fly on the wall when I did my first show because a lot of things that were going on. So my mind wasn't fully there. I had to like pass on what I was doing to other people. And I told them, we need this done, this done, this done. And I just watched them do it. And it was kind of, it, it 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 breaks your heart when someone like tries to abort your baby, you know. So, uh, yeah, uh, Sky and Chisholm they came in and they were like, uh, "We're gonna help you. We're gonna be on. Uh, we're gonna put it on live broadcast on Fight Flicks, and we're gonna do that." I'm like, "Oh, this is gonna be so cool." So, yeah, on FightFlix.tv you can watch the uh, the show. It's gonna be on September 29th. Um, hopefully, it goes off without a hitch, and all the teams are in. Everybody's really good to go. I've been in contact with a lot of the fighters and some people have had to drop out, um, but not like before. Um, I had some people drop out uh, this time around and it was pretty easy to, to fill it back up. So we don't have any hiccups there. You know, I've even told people uh, online tickets. Uh, my seats are like very reasonable. You know, I know some places are like 70, 60. Mine are like $40. You know, five hundred dollar tables. I I wanted to make things a little bit reasonable. Not to say the other places, you know, are crazy expensive. I'm not trying to dog anybody, but when you got fold out tables and chairs, but you know, I, I don't I don't want to like you know hate on anybody. I just always felt like we can just do so much more for these guys. So that's why I, I kind of went this route. You know, making things a little bit more reasonable. Really happy that uh, uh, my buddy created his uh, whole fight flicks thing because even that's reasonable. I mean, he started that um, because he didn't like what Flow Grappling was doing. Uh, 
the content that they get if if you use it as a fighter they, they'll like come after you and they'll you know switch it up on you and they won't let you use uh, your fight you know and they didn't like that they were like no your footage is your fight is your footage your footage is your fight you know here you go and so i was real happy when they did that because it was that was literally about a community thing you know we don't want to like piss on you and you know so i, I really appreciate that with those guys but, cool Alex, thanks so much for hanging out. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Uh, after the show on the 29th, I hope uh, everybody comes out to enjoy it. But uh, uh, stay tuned, man, because I'm serious. We got we got something that we want to put in the works. Um, Sky, me, and Tom, we want to do a massive collab. So we've got some big plans that are going to be coming up, and uh, we'll definitely I'll definitely be talking to you about that in a few weeks because. Uh, it's going to get crazy and it's going to get cool and it's going to get crazy, but we're going to enjoy ourselves because we like jujitsu and we're fucking here to roll <laughs> and just roll with the punches, man. It's going to be, it's going to be nice, man. It's going to be nice. Awesome. Again, thanks for hanging out. I'm, I'm you, looking bro. forward to, to find out more information about that as well. So. Oh yeah, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. This is Guardy with Clear Life Media, Clear Life Combat. Y'all be blessed. <laughs>